okay, you couldn't get more Christmassy. You couldn't get more fun. You couldn't get better kids. I love a Christmas kid. And you couldn't get more Judy Greer. And who's funnier than Judy Greer? Maybe Pete Holmes. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> Maybe Pete Holmes. That's an um, MPH right there. It is. <laughs> we love it. I it's, think people are going to love it, and they're going to be surprisingly touched. Sorry. That's what I was going to say. I knew that's Surprisingly what touched. Say. I think that that's what's touched. so, like, you're going to get... Pull it together. You're going to get, like, you're going to be on this <laughs> roller coaster ride. It's going to be fun. It's going to be funny. It's going to be cringy, which is what we want. And then at the end, you're going to be crying. I personally read the script to see if it would be on, on message with what I think Christmas is about. And I was deeply relieved that it totally is. It's about not othering people, letting them into the fold. And that is what I think Christmas is really about. Plus, I knew it would be funny and we would, with Dallas directing, would be able to improvise and stuff. And I knew working with Judy would be super fun. Yeah. And it was. I liked, uh, I was really excited about the, um, Did you almost get the giggles? Almost, but I didn't. Because I, I loved it. I couldn't believe I answered without engaging with that. That was really big for me. I, uh, all the things Pete said, yes, but, um, <laughs> but when Dallas told me aesthetically how he wanted the movie to look, that was really exciting to me because I love a Christmas story and I love Wes Anderson movies and I feel like this is like a really cool blend of like a very old fashioned, like aesthetically speaking story with um, that can be timeless. And when you take technology out of a story, so we are not like constantly texting and posting and stuff in the movie, like these people don't have cell phones. We barely have a home phone. Yeah. Um, I don't know, you just kind of like take away the present moment and it becomes timeless. It's totally true. If these people had smartphones, the whole movie would be about like a post. Yeah. But instead, back in the old days, there was a lot of stress about pageantry. Did that make sense? I don't remember being stressed about pageantry when I was a kid. Oh, in the 80s, we were all stressed about pageantry. <laughs> I'm not from Boston. Oh, so it's I a don't... very Boston thing. Pageants. Oh, pageants, we in call In Detroit, not as many. The pageants. Motor City, less so. Yeah. They were more about musicals and whimsy. And cars. And, oh, of course, the motor industry. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I am Grace, and you are Bob, and we are married, and... Very happy, I would say, but not without a little zest. Like, there's a little teasing. She signs up for the pageant. There's a light roasting. Yes, there's Meaning some light roasting. We love and trust each other enough as a family to let out a couple jokes. Yeah. And same with the kids. Yeah. There's a lot of joking with the kids, a lot of humor with the kids, but also that good, warm, Christmassy feeling like, I think this family likes each other. Dallas Jenkins. Lauren Graham. Lauren Graham is, I didn't get to meet Lauren. She's a national treasure. She's an NT. She's a GG too, right? Gilmore Girls? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's, a, she's, she's the like Gilmore Girl. She's like the Gilmore Girl. Yeah. She's awesome. Thankfully, we, uh, I think I, I saw her on set like the day she came in to have her costume fitting. We don't have scenes with her because I'm assuming we're dead. We're long dead. Um, or at least in a home. Uh, long in a home. So One we, of us died they haven't noticed. Anyway, um, I'm on a mission to be friends with Lauren Graham. Cute. It, it hasn't happened yet, but, you know. Val is, my wife is going to be stoked to meet Lauren Graham. She's uh, one of, I just think, the coolest people in the world. And then Dallas was amazing. Dallas has more energy <coughs> than all of the children on set put together. I don't know what he puts in his coffee in the morning. <coughs> children. But they should sell it. Um, he's always happy. He always has a ton of energy. Um... Well, I hope that children don't use this as an example of how to act all the time. Um, I think it's funny because looking back on it as a child, like the things that I thought were pretty normal, I can see now as an adult, were chaotic for my family. Um, but that is sort of what the holidays are all about. I mean, how often do you spend like that much time in close quarters with your family um, in many parts of the world? in cold climate, so you can't even really go outside and take a walk. Um, Hashtag Canada. 
Hashtag, we love Canada. Hashtag, friendly in Manitoba. Hashtag, Michigan, where I grew up. Um, Not that far from Canada. No, in it's fact, like we have a border. We're basically Canadian in Detroit because of the Windsor Ooh, border right there. The anyway, Peninsula. yeah, the Uber. Um, I think it. Rem I think it's going to be like a fun reminder of what, of what the chaos of the holidays is all about. Speed agree. I think this is the perfect movie for family to see, families to see together because, um, first of all, it's going to be better in the theater because every single movie is better in the theater. Oh, especially ones where kids will be in the audience. Oh my gosh, it's just going to be like hearing their laughter. I can't wait to see it in the theater with kids. We saw it at a, in a screening room that was as big as a movie theater, but it was definitely like I'm so excited to see it with people and <laughs> I think, you know, we're all looking for fun and family activities that every single generation of your family can do together and whether there's something it's, for every yeah. <laughs> layer of the family. I know. I think it's going to be, I think, I, I, I think it's the perfect thing to do as a holiday activity. And the perfect, you got to mark the occasion. Yeah. You know what, uh, Bruce Springsteen, I love this quote, he says, you don't remember your album going platinum, you remember getting the hot fudge Sunday." And it's like Christmas needs to be marked in the same way. Don't let it go by without doing things together in community that yeah. marks the occasion. Otherwise, you'll just be like, was that Christmas? You need things to make it special. The fun and I hope thing this about, like, one of them. And one of the things about it... One of the things that's fun about going to the theater is then, like, even if you have a bad time every time you... Even, even if you have... Am I going to say that? Even if you have a bad time. I was just thinking about, like, I like going to see a movie in the theater because then every time I see that movie, I'm remembered. I'm, like, reminded of that experience. Yeah, with, yeah. You know, and it, like, it makes the movie more than just the movie. It's an event. Yeah. You went to the Grove. It's a holiday event. Well, you can buy these tickets all the way up until November 2nd. So you can get the buy one, get one free until November 2nd. So what is better than getting basically a free ticket or a half price ticket if you think of it that way? Um, well, now, there's the truly... The marketing department would have picked that if that was the language no they excuse. thought was the most effective. They think buy one, get one free is better. It's true. 50% off just sounds like one of them is free. That's what motivates Why people. Don't you answer the question? You know what's really From fun? now on. Taking my daughter to this movie is going to be amazing. But the only thing better than taking my daughter to this movie is taking her to it and telling her that her ticket was free. Because she she's going to feel like she wants money. Is she's sick. She knows what money is. She's got one of those visors and one of those little <laughs> adding machines. She's always cha chunk, cha chunk. She does her taxes. But it's going to be exciting because it's going to feel like you won something. And what's more Christmassy than getting a gift? It's our gift to the fans. And it's not half off. It's one of them was free. It's like when you find out one month was free off your rent. That's so much more fun than saying 12% off. So this is the actual book, the actual copy that my wife brought home and that we read to our kids. It's dog-eared, it's got my notes for if I ever got a chance to make it as a movie, what I would want to do with it. And uh, I remember when uh, I was reading it to my kids for the first time, I'm laughing, it's nostalgic, It's it's a Christmas classic. I get to the end and I'm crying so hard, I can't even read. And my wife's like, let me have it. So she takes it, she starts reading, she's crying, take, gives it back to me and we just trade, uh, we take turns trying to get through this for our kids. And I remember when I closed the book, I just said, I have to make this movie. And so for 20 years, I've been chasing the rights and trying to get a chance to make it myself and finally got a chance to do so. So that even the fact that I'm able to sit here and deliver this movie to the world is a dream come true and a calling fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so your your wife and kids love this book for years. When you watched it, what what what? Kind yeah, of I mean, it's my wife. This is she would read it to our kids as part of their school curriculum, and so uh, you know that's like sacred ground that dad can't touch. So when all of a sudden dad's making this into a movie, it's a big deal, uh, you know. And their concern is because the book brings the laughter and the heart. And, uh, you know, how are you going to do that? And, um, and so none of them, all of them wanted to wait. They want to wait till the premiere to be able to watch it. And so they're, I think they're going to be in for a surprise that uh, Dad somehow and his, his buddy here pulled it off. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the fact that it's got that humor and heart, is, is a, it's a tightrope, right? And you have to find actors who can pull that off, who can be both funny and then also deliver the emotion. And uh, all I know is that every screening we've had, the audience has been laughing throughout. And then at the end, uh, the only sounds you're hearing are sniffles and, uh, and, and silence. And as people are leaving, they're wiping their tears. So I feel like we pulled it off. So 
uh, Judy Greer and Pete Holmes and Lauren Graham, who are the adult leads in the film, uh, one of the things that makes them so great and why we were so fortunate to get them is that they understand and can deliver heart and comedy at the same time or at different times. It all uh, comes together when they, when they bring it. And so I remember when, when each of those cast members signed on, we were just so grateful because we're like, they're going to deliver the heart and, and spirit of this movie. The kids are the tough part, right? Because uh, it's hard to find good kid actors and, and, and you might find some who are really good because they're comfortable on camera. They can be broad, they can be funny, they can be loud. But then when you got to deliver the emotion, uh, can they do that? That's a really challenging thing. And we were so lucky. Uh, we found such amazing actors. And when people walk out of this movie, they're always saying, where did you find those kids? They're amazing. I'm like, yeah, God brought them to us because uh, it was, we were fortunate after hours and hours of watching auditions to find these kids was really awesome. Yeah, we were hoping that the, nothing would happen to take them away from us uh, because they had really elevated themselves in the audition process. And you can see why when you watch the movie from Imogene's uh, performance, from uh, Beatrice's performance as Imogene, and obviously Molly, who's just a special actress and is gonna have a huge career ahead of her. We're, we're blessed to be able to have both of them. So as a director, you don't expect your crew to have the same dream you do. For some of them, it's a job, right? And they work on lots of different projects. And each director hopes that the crew will somehow uh, imprint onto themselves your dream and that they care about it as much as you do. And that's, that just is not, it's too much to ask typically. Uh, this was different. The crew really loved the project. We're happy to be there. My department heads, the production designer especially, the costumer, all of them, they really got what we were trying to do. They wanted to create this nostalgic, timeless feel. And so when it all came together and, and the music came together and you're finally watching the final version of this movie, it's like, man, this was a team that was on the same page. They, they, we were all, it's, it's a phrase we sometimes use, uh, we want to be sure we're making the same movie. And that's not, you'd be surprised at how rare that is. But everyone was making the same movie and everyone was on board with it and was appreciating the heart of it and gets choked up when they watch it. So uh, I was just so proud and grateful to be up in Canada, a place I hadn't been, and to get this crew um, that all loved this project together. Yeah, I, look, we were blessed with a really talented crew, like Dallas said, that just caught the vision of this and caught his vision specifically as the director and the filmmaker and support and supported each other. Um, it was one of those projects that was very seamless in its execution, even with the weather conditions getting a little nutty and blizzards and, you know, freezing ice storms and sub 40 temperatures <laughs> and all of those crazy things. Uh, nothing deterred this cast and crew to be able to deliver this special film. That's when you know as a producer, okay, we've got something really good where it's something like those outside elements and, and forces aren't going to rip them apart. Yeah, it, it really fits perfectly and seamlessly. I mean, our goal at Kingdom Story Company is to deliver films, true stories most of the time, this one a book, um, that really deliver that rush of hope, that leave audiences feeling uh, that they want more, that they actually were better off when they left the theater uh, than when they went into the theater when it began. And so this is one of those things. I'm really proud to have this poster up on our wall because um, you know Dallas is a great filmmaker and it's also just something that's timeless, it's classic, it's for my kids. My kids, this is like my love letter to my kids, which I don't get to do that very much. Yeah, I love when I can portray or uh, illuminate the greatest story ever told, you know, the story of the birth of Christ, uh, this thing that happened 2,000 years ago that regardless of whether or not you're a believer or a traditional churchgoer or someone who's centered their life around it, uh, everyone knows this story has heard it in some way. And a lot of us take it for granted. And we forget the truth of it. We forget that actually through the eyes of those in poverty or those on the outside, they might actually be closer to the heart and truth of this story than those of us who've maybe taken it for granted. And so that was something that about the book that, that hit me so hard. Um, is I'm like, man, I think the world needs to be reminded of the truth of this story. And who better to give it to us uh, one of the phrases we use is the, the greatest story ever told from the worst kids in the history of the world, uh, because that's how the book lightheartedly refers to the Herdmans. And I just loved that uh, these outsiders, kids in poverty, and yes, they're troubled. Yes, they're mean, uh, but a lot of it's because of circumstances outside their control. 
and their questions, their outsider status, what they're trying to understand the Christmas story is what actually re revives that in the spirit of everyone. And so as someone who loves Christmas, someone who loves the birth of Christ, someone who loves uh, the, the tone of this story, comedy and heart and all of that, someone who loves kids, uh, this movie, I, I felt like it's the movie it's, I was born to make. Yeah, think about the fact that there hasn't been that many Christmas movies that you go to the theater to see in a while. It used to be pretty standard. Every Christmas, there was a new movie that would come to theaters and, and, and hopefully it becomes a classic. There hasn't been any in a while. Uh, there's been tons, I mean, dozens of movies every year on streaming platforms and TV that all have a similar vibe to them. And they're great. I have no, I'm not complaining about them, but they're all pretty similar. It's romance Christmas or sometimes comedy Christmas, but uh, combining all of that, comedy Christmas with the heart of the nativity story, uh, this feels like something that people should see in theaters, that they can gather together, and that's what we're hearing. Audiences who've seen early screenings go, you got to see this together, you got to see it on the big screen, you got to gather as a group, and not just, I mean, and you'll be able to watch it in your home for, hopefully, forever, that it'll be a Christmas classic. But it starts in the theater, and we hope people will check it out there. Yeah, I mean, look, if you have kids that are five, six years old, they're going to get it. They're going to understand it. They're going to enjoy it. Obviously, they got short attention spans. But at the same time, adults are, too, because there's something absolutely in there for adults. They're not just sitting there sort of placating their children. It might seem like that from some of the promotional materials, but the heart is so significant in this film. Um, adults are going to walk away from it, probably wanting to go see it again, um, uh, which is always good. I can't wait to see that reaction because you get varied reactions um, based on uh, the surprise and the expectation that audiences think going in. So this is one of those films that will over deliver in that department. One of my favorite moments is just, it, there's no dialogue. It's, it's this imagery of sort of Christmas morning. You got the train going underneath the tree and the warm lights and just, all the, it's, it's a couple of seconds. We just sort of cut away to that. But that was my memories, my recollections of growing up was Christmas was a safe place. And uh, I hope families capture that, that safety um, watching this movie. If you're old, recollecting what it was like growing up, or if you're celebrating Christmas every year with your family. This has been one of my favorite reactions that we've gotten, besides the tears and the laughter, but people saying, oh my gosh, that looks exactly like my childhood. And yet when you watch the movie, you don't know what decade it is. And I think everyone from different nationalities, different backgrounds, different faith backgrounds, I have all said the same thing of like, man, I recognize that. That feels like my childhood or that feels like recent. I mean, it, it, it feels timeless and that's something that I think is important because Christmas is timeless. It's, just, it's about a story that took place 2,000 years ago and that every year, regardless of the year, it feels new again and so that's what we're hoping to capture in this. Uh, yeah, look, November 2nd is uh, Early Access Day. Of course, the film opens in theaters everywhere November 8th. Um, but you buy an adult ticket, you get a child ticket for free on November 2nd. Um, you want to take advantage of it. Who doesn't like a good deal, especially when you're going into the holidays? Um, and we're excited to be able to offer that to families. Yeah, we really wanted people to get a chance to see it a little early, and as a reward for seeing it early, you get the free ticket for your kid. You get 15 minutes of extra content, uh, some behind-the-scenes content. I show a clip of uh, The Chosen Season 5, which some people are like, that. they're excited to see that because it's not coming out till next year. We show behind-the-scenes of the Blake Shelton uh, performance of Go Tell It on the Mountain, which is amazing. So uh, there really is, uh, we, we really do make it a Christmas gift if you go to see it. Uh, early and then hopefully people like it and then they tell others and November 8th even more people are there.